What these scientists discovered in a cave left them questioning everything they knew about our planet and unearthed a treasure trove of historical significance. The image they shared of their finding shocked the entire world. We're close, said Hokan, the guide, his weathered face betraying a mix of pride and reverence. The breathing mountain is just ahead. As they approached the entrance Hokan had rediscovered after years of searching, the team could feel the cave's breath, a steady warm wind rushing from the depths of the earth. Little did they know that what lay beyond would challenge their understanding of geology, ecosystems, and the very history of our planet. Dr. Martinez turned to her team, her voice steady despite the adrenaline coursing through her veins. Remember, she said, we're not just scientists today. We're explorers, venturing into a world that's remained hidden for millions of years. Stay alert, stay safe, and document everything. With a mix of trepidation and excitement, the team began their descent into the unknown. Their courage and determination were palpable, and none of them could have predicted that the wonders they were about to uncover would soon shock the entire world. It was 1991 when Hokan first heard the mountain breathe, and he nearly turned and ran. The local farmer who spent his days gathering aloes wood in the dense jungle had just stumbled upon something that would eventually capture the world's imagination. He had been gathering aloes wood in Vietnam's Phong Ha Ke Bang National Park, a daily routine he'd followed for years. The jungle around him was alive with the usual sounds, birds calling, insects buzzing, and the occasional rustle of a small animal in the underbrush. But this day was different. An otherworldly roar echoed through the limestone karsts, a sound so powerful and frightening, it seemed to come from the dragons of ancient legend. Hokan froze, his hand gripping his collecting basket tightly. The sound sent shivers down his spine, awakening primal fears deep within his psyche. It was as if the mountain itself had come alive, exhaling with the force of a slumbering giant. Most locals would have fled immediately, the mountains were steeped in mysterious tales, warnings of spirits, and underground kingdoms where the unwary disappeared forever. Stories passed down through generations spoke of those who ventured too deep into the mountains and never returned, their souls claimed by the spirits that dwelled within the earth. Hokan felt that fear too, his heart pounding as he stood at the edge of a sharp limestone cliff, listening to that terrible, beautiful sound. The wind picked up, carrying a mist that seemed to dance around him as if trying to lure him closer to the mountain's secrets. But something else stirred in him that day, a courage he didn't know he possessed. It was more than mere curiosity. It was a calling, as if the mountain had chosen him specifically to reveal its hidden wonders. Following the sound, he discovered a crack in the mountainside, where warm air rushed out with such force it moved his hair. The roar grew louder, pulling him forward with an invisible force. I was afraid, Hokan would later tell the scientists, his eyes distant as he recalled that fateful day. But the mountain was calling. I had to answer. Stepping into the cave entrance, he entered another world entirely. The temperature dropped immediately, creating an ethereal atmosphere that made his skin prickle. Mist swirled around his feet, and the air felt charged with an energy he couldn't explain. His small flashlight revealed glimpses of strange limestone formations and captivating stalactites that seemed almost carved as if some ancient society had shaped them with unknown tools. The tunnel before him was deep and gloomy, disappearing into darkness. Every step revealed new wonders, massive chambers branching off in all directions, forming a complicated labyrinth that seemed to have no end. The roar of water grew stronger as he ventured deeper, echoing off walls that disappeared into the darkness above. The sound reverberated through his body, a primal rhythm that seemed to sink with his heartbeat. As he ventured further, his squinting eyes caught something that made him gasp. On one of the walls, barely visible beneath years of mineral deposits, were what appeared to be ancient paintings. Crude figures danced across the rock face, depicting hunts, rituals, and what looked like a cave. It was evidence that he wasn't the first to discover this place. Others had ventured here long ago, leaving their mark for future generations. But daylight was fading 
and the storm clouds gathering outside warned him not to venture further. Hokan understood it was time for him to leave. The cave seemed to resist his departure, the air current pushing against him as he turned back. Reluctantly, he retraced his steps, marking the location in his mind. Yet the dense jungle and similar limestone formations would make finding this spot again a challenge that would take nearly two decades to overcome. Few believed his tales of the breathing mountain and its hidden wonders when he returned to his village. Some laughed, dismissing his story as the product of an overactive imagination or perhaps too much rice wine. Others listened with wide eyes, a mixture of fear and awe on their faces. Those who did believe warned him to stay away. They said the caves in these mountains were sacred places, hallowed land where the spirits dwelled. Many locals had long practiced rituals here, offering sacrifices in hopes of good fortune and prosperity. To disturb such a place could bring untold misfortune upon the entire village. An elder of the village, her face etched with the wisdom of years, took Hokan aside. The mountains have chosen to reveal their secrets to you, she said, her voice barely above a whisper. But with this knowledge comes great responsibility. The balance between our world and the spirit world is delicate. We must respect the boundaries. The cave remained hidden for 18 years and was long known only through Hokan's stories and local legends. But in 2009, everything changed. A team of experts convinced him to help them search for the cave. It took several failed expeditions, weeks of searching through treacherous terrain, and countless false leads before Hokan finally relocated the cave's entrance. 80 meters straight down, a member of the team announced, checking her equipment one last time. Her voice echoed in the cave entrance, a mix of excitement and trepidation evident in her tone. The international scientists stood at the cave's entrance, where that warm breath that had called to Hokan still pulsed from the mountain's heart. Alongside Dr. Martinez stood Howard Harrison and Deb Limbert, the British researchers who had first documented the cave's existence in 2009, and Hokan himself. His weathered face betrayed a mix of pride and reverence. The years had etched deep lines into his face, but his eyes sparkled with the same wonder he had felt on that day long ago. The descent was both terrifying and awe-inspiring. As they rappelled down, their headlamps revealed glimpses of the wonderland below. The beams of light danced off crystal formations, creating a dizzying array of colors and shadows. The air grew more relaxed as they descended, carrying the earthy scent of ancient stone and the faint mist from unseen waters. But nothing could have prepared them for what awaited at the bottom. Sweet Mother of Mercy, Dr. Harrison breathed as they switched on their powerful floodlights. The beams couldn't reach the cavern's ceiling or far walls. They were standing in a space that could swallow a Manhattan skyscraper whole with room to spare. The cave, which locals called Son Dung, was the most extensive self-contained network of tunnels and caves ever discovered. Five kilometers long and 150 meters wide, it was a subterranean realm that defied imagination. The team stood silently for several moments, each member trying to process the sheer scale of what they saw. The scientific team moved carefully through the chambers, each new discovery leaving them more awestruck than the last. The cave's architecture, sculpted by millions of years of water erosion, included enormous chambers decorated with stalactites and stalagmites, created by water droplets' slow, patient dance. These mineral formations are extraordinary, Dr. Martinez announced, examining the cave walls. Her gloved hand traced the contours of a particularly intricate formation. Sandstone, quartzite, mica schist, the geological diversity here is unprecedented. Each rock type told part of the story of the cave's formation, a tale millions of years in the making. Her assistant, an undergrad student on her first field trip named May, furiously scrabbled on her notebook, trying to keep up with Dr. Martinez's description of the mineral formations. But it was the cave's ecosystem that genuinely set it apart. In areas where light beams pierced through ceiling cracks, forests had grown. The team stood at the edge of one such chamber, marveling at the lush greenery. Trees reached towards the distant ceiling, their leaves a vibrant green that seemed out of place so far underground. Birds flew through these sunlit chambers, their calls echoing off ancient walls. 
The scientists watched in amazement as a species of swiftlet, previously thought to nest only in coastal caves, darted through the air. Bear tracks marked the sandy shores of underground pools. At the same time, bats roosted in the higher reaches, their soft chittering adding to the cave's symphony. It's a completely self-contained world, May marveled, documenting a spider species she suspected was new to science. Its iridescent body glimmered in the beam of her headlamp, its web an intricate masterpiece spanning a small crevice. These creatures might have evolved in isolation for millions of years. Dr. Harrison, who had been examining some of the more giant formations, called the team over. Look at this, he said, his voice filled with wonder. He pointed to a massive stalagmite, quickly twice the height of a man. Based on the average growth rate of these formations, this single stalagmite could be over 70,000 years old. As they ventured more profoundly, the team understood why local people considered this place sacred. There was something more than just scientific wonder here, a sense of connection to the Earth itself. The ethereal glow from light beams leaking through the granite seemed to dance like spirit lights, creating an atmosphere transcending mere geological interest. Local guides who accompanied them spoke in hushed tones of the cave's spiritual significance. They explained how generations had considered this mountain range hallowed land, where the physical and spiritual worlds met. Even now, people came to make offerings, hoping the cave's ancient power would bring them prosperity and good fortune. One of the guides, an elderly man named Tran, shared a legend passed down through his family. It is said, he began, his voice low and reverent, that the first people of this land emerged from these caves. They were born from the earth itself, shaped by the spirits of the mountain. That is why we treat this place with such respect. It is the womb of our ancestors. The team spent weeks documenting their findings, each day bringing new discoveries. They found evidence of ancient water levels marked on the walls, telling stories of floods and droughts spanning millennia. They documented dozens of new species, from tiny phosphorescent insects to unusual plants growing in the twilight zones near the cave's natural skylights. Dr. Martinez and her team worked tirelessly, their initial awe giving way to focused scientific inquiry. They mapped chambers, analyzed rock samples, and cataloged the diverse life forms they encountered. However, even as they applied rigorous scientific methods, there was a sense that Sundung was more than just a subject of study. It was a place that challenged their understanding of the natural world and their place in it. Look at this, May called one day, her voice echoing through a massive chamber. She stood before a wall where water carved intricate patterns that resembled ancient hieroglyphics. Nature's own art gallery. The team gathered around, marveling at the intricate designs. Dr. Harrison ran his hand gently over the surface, feeling the grooves and ridges. It's remarkable, he murmured. These patterns, they're not random. There's a mathematical precision to them that's almost impossible to believe. As the expedition progressed, the team made a startling discovery. In one of the deeper chambers, they found evidence of human habitation dating back thousands of years. Stone tools, primitive pottery shards, and the remains of ancient hearths told a story of early humans who had sought shelter in the cave's embrace. This changes everything, Dr. Martinez said, carefully examining a piece of pottery. It's not just a geological wonder. Sun Dung is a window into human history, a place where our ancestors found refuge and perhaps even thrived. They realized that the viral images that had first captured the world's attention had barely scratched the surface of Sun Dung's wonders. No photograph could truly capture the sensation of standing in these massive chambers, feeling the cave breathe, and hearing the distant roar of its underground river. Hokan joined them for one final descent into the cave as their expedition drew close. Standing on one of those diamond dust beaches, watching the interplay of their lights on the emerald waters, he smiled. The years seemed to fall away from him, and for a moment, he was once again that young farmer, standing in awe at the entrance of a breathing mountain. Two weeks after their return from Sondung, Dr. Elena Martinez's coffee splashed across her desk as she jolted upright, eyes fixed on her monitor. Her inbox was flooded with messages, and her phone wouldn't stop ringing. 
May rushed in, clutching her tablet. Her eyes were wide with excitement, and a mix of disbelief and wonder was etched across her face. You've seen it too. It's everywhere. Twitter, Instagram, even National Geographic is trying to verify its authenticity. How did this happen? Elena asked, scrolling through the viral posts. Their carefully guarded images of Sandung were spreading like wildfire across the internet. May swiped through her tablet, showing Elena the extent of the phenomenon. It looks like one of Dr. Harrison's test uploads to the cloud accidentally went public. By the time he realized and took it down, it was too late. The images had already been shared thousands of times. The photos that had seemed impressive on their tiny screens now captivated the world. Each new image shared online elicited thousands of comments, theories, and expressions of awe. The discovery of Sundung has had far-reaching implications. It has sparked a renewed interest in cave exploration worldwide, with scientists and adventurers alike wondering what other hidden wonders might be waiting to be discovered. It has also highlighted the importance of preserving natural spaces, showing the world the incredible biodiversity that can exist in even the most unexpected places. But most importantly, Sundung has become a symbol of the harmony between scientific inquiry and cultural respect. The management of the cave involves a delicate balance between research needs, conservation efforts, and the preservation of local traditions. It models how ancient spaces can be studied and appreciated without compromising their cultural significance. Have you ever stumbled upon a hidden wonder that left you in awe of nature's majesty? What would you do if you were in Ho Khan's position, rediscovering a breathtaking cave after nearly two decades? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for joining us on this extraordinary journey into the heart of Sundung, and see you in the next video.